Well, that song just brought tears to my eyes. It did. Anybody else? Oh, our chosen family. You are our chosen family. Before we formally get started, I did a little research this past week on families, and I don't, I'm not going to ask anybody to raise your hand, but there are members of us in our community that are estranged from family. It's hard to believe, but for some reason or another, somebody's not talking to somebody. I found out that this happens in one third of families, something that isn't spoken about much. And if it's happening to you, just know that you are not alone. The good news is we can choose our family. We can choose people we get along with. We love to laugh with. We love to vacation with. We love to have fun with. We love to be spiritual with. And you, my friend, if you are watching the Sunday gathering live or replay, you are part of our chosen family. So I'm Sandra Champlain and a warm welcome to you wherever in the world you are. Each week we try to put a smile on your face, connecting the two worlds, our life and those our friends and family in the afterlife, bring some joy, some inspiration, some love. And so today is no different. We are celebrating you guys today, our community. Many moons ago, I posted in our Facebook group, if you have any ideas for themes for our Sunday gathering or music, we'd love to hear from you. And if you want to be part of our Facebook group, it's easy. Go to wedontdie.com, click on Facebook group, scroll down, you'll see a bright yellow post and you can add your ideas. But today we have chosen to use your ideas for our Sunday gathering. So our first song, Karen had picked that out for us. So thank you very much, Karen. And Chosen Family, Julie was kind enough to pick that out. For our time together today, Carrie, Phil, and I will share in the address, again, chosen by you. Carrie will be doing our opening prayer and our, going right into our healing. We have a magnificent community member, Mr. Craig Dowling, who is a longtime friend and part of our chosen family. He will be doing our medium demonstration for today and also our words for the week and our closing prayer. So as we go along, we'll share with who of you picked these things for us today. And I do have a funny suspicion that this will be the first of many. So welcome wherever you are, sit back, relax, and I'll turn it over to Carrie. Thank you very much, Sandra, and thank you to our community for providing our songs and part of our themes for today. It is an absolute pleasure to be able to use the information you've shared in the listeners community. And if you're not a member, Sandra will be able to put a link up for you to be able to join that community on social media. So before we go any further, let us start our Sunday gathering in the usual manner, in prayer. Let's close our eyes and enter into that place, that sacred space. Divine and ever-present spirit, today as we sit within this wonderment, this wonderment and reassurance that life continues after this physical one, that knowledge and understanding of life beyond life brings us that hope and assurance that our loved ones, our friends, our pets are but just a breath away. Sometimes when we are low and lost, we can lose this faith and this knowledge. But through moments like this where we come together as a community, we can once again be reconnected into that knowledge and understanding, bringing together lights within lights of that spirit within spirit, taking us forward, ever knowing that our loved ones are close. May we truly be reassured, may we truly be comforted, may we raise our souls to the sky as we increase our own mindset positivity, and ability to love all as we enter into our Sunday gathering. So we leave this space, this sacred space, within each and every heart and mind of everyone participating. Amen. 
So it's my pleasure to be able to take us into the healing moment. Now, there is lots happening around the world right now where people need healing. But we know that there is lots happening within your homes, within your family circles, and within your own communities that also need heating, healing. So when we look at this healing power, we allow ourselves to be that conduit, that medium, if you want, for the healing power of the spirit. And you, regardless of whether you know what healing feels like to be a conduit for, allow yourself to trust that we believe you can be that conduit. More importantly, the spirit world believes you can be that conduit. All you need to do is raise your mind and your heart to a place within you where you can picture and imagine the world a better place. We do not want to send those that are unwell or in places of disharmony more of what they already have, but they do need what we have to give to them. That's positivity, love and healing. So as Sandra plays this beautiful song that has been picked by Meg, may we enter into that space and allow yourself to trust that you can make a difference. Let's heal together. Thank you very much, Meg, for that beautiful song. And we have an address made up of three parts, but it also involves another three people. And I'm going to acknowledge a lovely person called Latona, who put a theme of rainbow after the storm. Now, this theme itself is beautiful enough, and we'll all have times where we've had that rainbow after the storm. But consider this, that a few days ago, maybe even just one day ago, Sandra put a picture of a rainbow, but the whole rainbow, the circle of a rainbow, as seen from a place where it wasn't hidden, and it has had so many shares, it's gone viral, so to speak. And it got me thinking about Latona's theme of rainbow after the storm. We often, when we're in a storm, we can't see the whole picture, can we? There's no rhyme or reason to the storm being there. There's no thought about why we're experiencing what we're experiencing. And we're putting this in the theme of rainbow after the storm as in our personal storm within families, within friendships, within health, within work, within self. That rainbow after the storm is something that we strive for and we hope for. But those of you that have been in the midst of a storm, and I know there'll be nobody watching that hasn't been in their own storm. You can't see the rainbow, can you? Or you might see half the rainbow that half that comes above the earth, above the surface of the planet we live on. But when you look at it from space or from high enough in the sky, a rainbow actually is a circle made of those colors that create a full circle. The circle of life, the circle of existence, the circle of a rainbow. Who would have thought we would have said the circle of a rainbow? But to see the rainbow after the storm is actually something that allows us to preempt it. What if we could see the whole rainbow, every part of it, the whole circle during the storm? Now that, my friend, might be a feat to ask for. I know in the storms that I've been in, it wasn't easy to believe that it was there for a reason, whether that be low mood, whether that you just feeling lost, whether you're feeling absolutely undecisive about something you have to choose or make a decision on. The rainbow seems so far away, and yet we know it's there. We know the rainbow is there afterwards. In fact, how many of you have had an awful part of your life, and when you've come out the other end, you've reflected and thought, wow, I wouldn't have met that person 
had that experience, gone those places, succeeded in the way that I've succeeded, had I not had that experience. And often we'll look back and think, I wouldn't have been without it. I might have dulled it down a little bit, but I wouldn't have been without it. The rainbow after the storm is something that always happens where there is sun and where there's rain. It's in that part where the rain ebbs off just long enough for us to be able to see the rainbow, that we begin to see that light after the dark. Now we wouldn't know the different parts of life were we not able to exist in the badder. The badder, I've just invented a word, the worst parts. If we are in the tough parts of life and we move through that, we appreciate the better parts of life. We appreciate the parts that we wouldn't have seen before. Some would say that we're in the playground because we've only had it so good and we've come onto this planet to experience so bad or badder with my new word. But if we move forward with that and actually trust that we are here existing and living, hoping, and learning, loving, and absolutely being embraced by life itself, then there has to be a rainbow. There has to be that rainbow. Because what if part of our life always has a bit of storm? Maybe life is meant to be a bit stormy. I mentioned maybe about a month or two ago, a saying that talked about a ship a ship that's out at ocean, where it's choppy, where the waves are high, where the ship rocks backwards and forwards, and maybe even takes on some water, where people aren't feeling very safe on it, but where new lands are found. Yes, a ship is safe in the harbour. But remember, that's not what ships are built for. They are built for exploring. They are built for encountering new experiences. Maybe our bodies are like that. We could stay in the harbour all safe and nurtured on the side looking at the water coming in and going out as the tide comes in and goes out. Or we could maybe embark on some journeys out to sea, not knowing where we would go, what would happen, what experiences we would have Maybe that's what our life is for, what these bodies were built for. Whether they walk or whether they have another mode of moving about, whether you talk or whether you have another way of interacting with people, whether you can hear or whether you can see. Your body is here, like it or not, in the way it's meant to be. Now, if you're anything like me, and I'll just speak for myself, your body might have been younger or getting older. It might have been bigger or smaller. Or in my case, my daughter said, I just saw her yesterday. She said, mom, you're shrinking. That's the body. We get older. I might have shrunk a millimeter, maybe two. But I've got the body I have. And sometimes I feel way out to sea. But that's what life is for. I know there's a rainbow after the storm. I know the storm, I won't always recognize when I'm in it until I see the rainbow and stop and take stock of everything I've experienced. When we are out at sea, it's often hard not to notice the storm. But when you see the rainbow, you know, that's the time to look back and think, what have I learned? What am I grateful for? What did I do well? And what would I do differently? And then pick all that old body up and get on with it, knowing we got to make the most of this life. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry, for those wonderful words. It's um, always magical to listen to people speak and paint a picture in your mind as you listen. Well, 
it's been a fabulous gathering so far and I was prepared to speak about one thing then all of a sudden as I close my eyes in that healing section I a penny dropped for me many people say music transports them and I get it now because as my eyes were closed and that young boy sang I heard an old soul singing speaking and it moved an emotion within me and I presume it was his father when he hit that high note as well really did strike me again and it brings a new meaning to what you guys in the community have done when Sandra asked what's your favorite music or what would you like to hear on the Sunday gathering and you've all sent your recommendations in and to hear that song was very very moving but it's it struck an even deeper chord for me now because there's a lady upon this gathering called Lisa that picked a song called Ain't No Mountain High Enough and it's a song you will all know a song that you may dance to or had a moment and reflected and, and thought how special it was. But actually it was written by a gentleman and a lady, a gentleman called Nicholas Ashford and Valerie Simpson in 1966. But it was sung by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell in 1967. And it was a huge success struck so many people and moved them just like that healing song has just moved you. Three years later, it was sung again by a wonderful lady, a solo, a lady that received awards for her vocals, her style of singing and the way that she was, a lady that you know very, very well, Diana Ross from the Supremes. It shows us that we can all sing to a degree. We can all have something that is wonderful within inside us but when we hit a note that strikes a chord people really take notice and that song was taken notice but if you think of the lyrics and I've wrote them down here maybe not in order but what stood out to myself ain't no mountain high enough ain't no valley low enough ain't no river wide enough no matter where you are no matter how far. Those words really resonated with me. And what actually was suggested within my heart was love conquers all, that it reaches all parts of the world, wherever we are, whether we're separated, whether we're estranged, or whether we are in that club that nobody wants to be in, that one that has grief, because that grief affects everyone in different ways and different times of our life. And it was this weekend where I was out with my children where I met a lady and I got to know her about 10 years ago. And I went to her family home and I carried out some readings. And as I approached the counter with my children to get a coffee, she said, hello, Philip. And I looked at her and I thought, she looks familiar. And she just said, I need to thank you for what you did all those years ago. You probably won't remember. And all of a sudden I did. And at the end, she said to me, my youngest son is now in the spirit world. And that hit me because I thought I was going to do a reading today about strength, about overcoming. Well, as I sat down with my children at the table with that coffee, she caught my gaze and I thought how strong she has been, how courageous she has been to pick herself up, to carry on with life to make the most of it and as I left I just said my goodbyes and she said I want to thank you for those words you gave me a strength and conviction to carry on living and that was before her son passed so ladies and gentlemen that strength what is inside that nothing can be too high nothing can be too wide or too far whatever situation it is in life we can conquer all. We have a strength, a faith, a belief within us that can pick up life and make life happy once again, that we can have a love that we can remember and be known for that love and be lucky to have that love because it's what makes us who we are. 
those loves that we've had, those loves that we've lost, are important to us all and never shall they be forgotten. But it's a special place within our hearts that picks us up, that gets us over these obstacles or hurdles, these estrangements or these fallings out. It is that where there is no mountain high enough, no valley low enough and no river wide enough, because that love built a bridge will help you climb and create another world where your well-being and happiness will be the best that it can be with a new fondness, a new heart, a new mind, but most of all, a new zest for life. And I'm going to leave you with those words and say thank you. Thank you so much, Phil. And thank you, Carrie. Isn't this great, you guys? I have to tell you, my address, portion of the address, is due to Eileen. So Eileen, you know who you are. Thank you so much. She said, every day, small miracles. And I know that I am Little Miss Sunshine every Sunday, right? With a big smile on my face. But you should have seen me about a half hour before it started, or maybe even 10 minutes before it started. I didn't get a good night's sleep last night. I've got pressures on my mind. And as human as we are, I thought, oh, it's time for the Sunday gathering. <laughs> and as a little small miracle, I thought, Sandra, you know, the moment you start that Zoom room, you feel great. And the community comes in, the chat box opens, you see Carrie and Phil's face. Darren is away, he's traveling to America for a few weeks, so we won't have him today. But we've got Craig here with us. And just by nature of being engaged in our community, I have to tell you, there's this miracle of transformation. Guys and gals, to be in your own brain and your own thoughts is often the worst place to be. So you should never be there alone. You should always invite someone in. So I am grateful for our Sunday gatherings to be together. So I feel like a million bucks right now. Absolutely, I do. So Eileen, everyday small miracles. Well, I think everybody will appreciate your theme. I remember a quote, I had to look it up, by Albert Einstein. There are only, only, he says, two ways to live your life. One as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. So be honest with yourself. How often are we living life like everything's a miracle? If you're anything like me, not so much. I need to be reminded. So I'm so grateful that I get to talk about this today. We human beings, and we don't really have a choice in the matter, this is just part of our humanity. We take big things, huge things, fabulous, fascinating things, and we normalize them. They become just no big deal, okay? So if you think back on some of the greatest things that have happened to you in your life and some of the maybe presents that you really wanted that somebody gave you or that you bought for yourself. You're so excited. Well, where are they now? Are they in the basement, in the closet? Do you even remember? At one time they were huge and now mm, not so much. Not our fault, but this is just kind of what happens. So with the Albert Einstein quote today, I thought, what would it be like to live our day to day like Einstein? did and he turned out pretty darn successful so probably not a bad way to be but look around and see what is a miracle mom and i like to watch some old films and i was just thinking of maybe back in the days of the the cowboys in the 17 1800s they're out there on the prairie you know they haven't showered in weeks they're eating their dry crusty bread or their dried beef or something and in pops one of us from the year 2023 and you know what's the first thing we're going to do we're going to pull out our phone and we're going to do a selfie. <laughs> that would absolutely blow anybody's mind from any time in the past, even from our own past, I mean the fact that we have the technology that we have today that not only we have every bit of almost every bit of information that we can get at the snap of our fingers, we have it at our fingers. I mean, 
It's a miracle, isn't it? The fact that I physically haven't seen Carrie and Phil, but just a couple of times in the past few years, but I get to see them and talk to them every day via technology. That is a miracle. Our friends back in the wagon who haven't showered and eaten their beef jerky, they couldn't even imagine this. But you know what maybe came for them in their lifetime? Indoor plumbing. Imagine an indoor toilet. Oh, shower. Oh, that's a big deal. Miracles. Never thought possible. But here we are, 2023. Oh, they're just normal. They're no big deal. They are just regular. If you look around your world right now, what do you see that is really a big deal and is really quite miraculous? Now, I know a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the miracle of our human body. So I won't go there again. You can watch the past ones. But if you're to look at the world, the rock we call planet Earth, they say we're all made up of the star stuff, the same elements, the stone, the trees, the earth, the water. How in the world is everything? How does it come from all of that? I have no idea. To me, that's miraculous, absolutely miraculous. I have some lights that are lighting me right now. And to think, of people with, you know, Thomas Edison and others that worked really hard and had a dream and turned into reality, that we have lights, that we don't have to live outside in the cold and build fires. We can be inside. How many of us have a nice cozy bed to sleep in? That's pretty darn miraculous inside the house, probably not too far from the toilet. The food that we eat, we get to go to a market and just about everything we could ever want is right there. How crazy is that? Do you recognize that when you have your grocery list and you head into the market? Or are you so fast, oh, pick up milk, pick up bread, got to have it. Speaking of milk and bread, we don't have to milk cows, most of us. We don't have to make our own bread. It's all right there. That is a miracle. I have birds. <laughs> if you followed me at all or seen my posts on Facebook, yes, I love these little critters. I never thought I would, but when COVID hit, bought a few bird feeders for the, for the house. And I am so intrigued by the intelligence of nature. We have hummingbirds that will be joining us somewhere around end of April and May. The miracle that they know where to show up after being gone all winter and fall, they fly down to Central America and they come back to where they were born in my backwoods here. Now they don't come together. They don't fly as a flock. Each and every hummingbird is independent and follows their own nature. Is it not miraculous that they know just where to go? How each and every feather on any kind of bird is all in their DNA and they've got everything that they've got so that they can fly. And flying is a miracle. It's been a long time since I've been on an airplane. I used to fly an awful lot, but I always say that moment of gratitude to the Wilbur and Orville Wright, the Wright brothers, who spent that time looking at the birds. If they can do it, we can too. But how many of us have normalized just about everything in our life? And our brain gets very busy, worried about the future, and thinking about the past. Oh, we are miraculous, that little voice inside of our head. I, I think it's to keep us thinking that we're playing this game called life, that we're really locked in as passengers of life. You know, it has us 
not think about who we really are, but there must be some greater intelligence. A few episodes ago on my Shades of the Afterlife podcast, you might have participated in this. I did an experiment in remote viewing. It's an ESP technique. And I did three things. One, and I'm not going to tell you the answers here in case you want to participate in this, but I had something on my dining room table that I was focusing on. And I gave people just time to let their imagination kick in because that's how our soul communicates and receives information of what some of the elements are of that thing I had on my dining room table. We, they say we've got a left brain and a right brain and the analytical side and the creative side, and I don't remember which side is which, and that doesn't really matter. The thing is, we have to put aside that judgmental side that's trying to figure things out and just be creative. See, if you could be wrong and you can just make it up, you know, what would be on my table? What color would it be? You know, how heavy would it be? And then I had something that I held in my hand and I, I smelled it, you know, and just gave it to people, what, whatever you think, you know, by the end of the episode, I'll tell you what it is. And then the last thing that I did is I sang a song, but I did, I sang it while I had paused so that nobody could hear the song. And by the end of the podcast episode, I revealed the song and the, and the two objects. And I asked people if you'd like to email me. Well, some people emailed me, I gave it my best shot. I didn't see that, but this is what I did see. And I wrote them back. I said, you actually saw things that were in my line of vision. They were not the, th it was not the thing I had intended, but you picked up on that. People got different elements of the objects. Some people knew the objects. And one lady wrote me, she couldn't have been more excited because she knew the song. To have an experience, a psychic experience, and you've had them, but you may not have really tapped into that's what's happening. You, we all have this soul power. It's not magic. It is a, mir a miracle, but we are all miraculous. But to have that feeling, and I know I've done plenty of these experiments that if I can tap in or someone else could tap into these things. Now, their soul would have had to tap into the, into the past because I had recorded it a couple of weeks before they had heard it. But that is the intelligence of our, our soul. And for people that want to practice this at home, I even said, get a magazine that you've never opened before. And just have that little prayer, that moment of you know, if I were to know what pictures are in this magazine, what would they be? And to be able to just play, even though you're probably going to get it wrong, and then jot down a whole bunch of things, and then go through the magazine. And all of a sudden, some of those things that you had seen in your mind's eye, there they are. Well, I know, Eileen, you said everyday small miracles, but I tell you, sister, these are some really big miracles. Who we are is incredibly miraculous. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of that. Now, we have been doing these Sunday gatherings for a long time now. And like I said, our minds can easily normalize things. So for me, you know, those few minutes before I got on today, forgetting what it is that we do. You know how big of a miracle it is that Carrie and Phil and Craig, our, our active mediums communicating with our loved ones and bringing forward evidence that they still live? That's a huge miracle, big deal, very big deal. And the fact that we all possess the soul power and like playing piano, we can learn it. We all have capability. How far we practice it depends on where we go. But as beautiful and wonderful as these people are, we all are made up of the same miraculous stuff. So while we're here on this Sunday gathering, and as you explore the rest of your day, would you do me and us and Eileen the favor 
of looking for those everyday small miracles. Remember what Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One as though nothing is a miracle, the other as if everything is a miracle. We get to choose. And I have to tell you, by just spending these few minutes talking about miracles, I feel great. Oh gosh, I want to do, I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. I do. So that's the power of who we are. But left to our own devices and left being in our own head alone, it's not a good place to be. So with that, thank you. And thank you, Eileen, for that idea. And folks, again, you can be part of our community, we don't die.com. Click on Facebook group and find that post. And please put your favorite songs, put your favorite or your ideas, because you are as much of a part of this community as we are. We wouldn't just do this for ourselves. No, we need you and we love you. And anybody that is watching our Sunday gathering has to be a good friend of ours because we're all a little strange. <laughs> but to be with us, we are so grateful you're here. So with that, we are going to go into our demonstration of mediumship. And we have Mr. Craig Dowling here. Craig, I don't even remember when I first talked to you, but I know since we started doing everything that we've been doing online in spring of 2020, you came aboard and you're always just so pleasant and you've got a smile on your face and you've been in classes and continuing your development well, every month since we first met you. So Craig is our medium today, and I'm, I'm just filled with joy to welcome Craig. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this goes. I know we've got some friends here for the very first time. And those of you who've been here before, this is a miracle. So listen to my words, okay? <laughs> Craig will work with the spirit world. Our loved ones are alive. They are well, they are moving so fast that we cannot see them, but they exist, they surely do. They can communicate with us through that same side of our brain, our imagination, things that we chalk up to our imagination, many times are not. Those loving memories, those happy thoughts, that's them. Those songs that may come on, that's them letting us know that they are alive and well. The beauty of doing the medium demonstrations on our Sunday gathering is even though there's just a usually a small handful of representatives from the spirit world letting us know they're still alive and they're watching and they're with us, lets us all know that our loved ones are around. Craig has trained and studied for a very long time and he I'm sure, like any normal human being, has a bit of nerves running through him, but he pushes past that and it just makes himself open to the spirit world. Those folks will put thoughts and memories and feelings, maybe pictures, maybe smells, who knows, within him. They will, or he will give us an initial few bits of information about the person that has contacted him. He will give those bits of information and we want you to listen because the spirit world knows who's here today. They do. If you can recognize all the things he mentions about this person as somebody that no longer walks this earth, but that you know, we want you to press your raise hand button. Could be a family member, could be a friend, Sometimes it's somebody distant. So we ask you to be present. This is not the time to go make yourself a cup of tea and think, oh, it's gonna be for somebody else. Really pay attention because it could be for you. So if you would like to find that raise hand button on your device right now and press it just to see what happens on your side, go for it. See, isn't that miraculous that you guys can press something and we can see it over here. We see all these hands like this. And now it should say lower hand. Go ahead and press the button again so your hand goes down. Beautiful. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to figure out who is the recipient of our message today. If it is you, 
and you're the last hand standing, so to speak, I will press a button on my side and you'll get a little pop up that says host would like you to unmute yourself and you'll see a button where you can do that. We like to hear your voice, but we don't want you to say too much. We want everybody leaving here today knowing that Craig's talking to the folks in the spirit world. So all we need from you, if you work with Craig, is just a good yes or no to the information that he's giving. Could be an I don't know. Don't volunteer information because, you know, we humans are funny. We can leave here and normalize everything and think, oh, I said it. No big deal. No, no, just say yes or no, okay? Is that a deal? I know we get excited and we want to share more. But let Craig do the work and please don't feel bad if you have to say no. Carrie and Phil teach in their classes that no simply means a new opportunity. So Craig will look back in and see what else our friend in the spirit world, world has to say. Now, please, I know we are all human and we all beg and plead that it's our loved one that comes through today. And it may be, but it may not be because we routinely have a couple hundred people live in our, our room. But I think the spirit world have a plan for all of us. First of all, you may not see them, but your loved ones are packed right in around you. They're excited too. They want you to know that they are here with you. So don't be surprised if the messages that come through Craig or some of the evidence or just paying attention to how close they are, take it on board for yourself. I think there's gold in anybody's communication. I really do. So not the time to check out and hope for the next one. But these people speak on behalf of everyone in the spirit world to let us all know that they are still very much alive and they're still very much a part of our life. We like to play a song before we have our demonstration of mediumship. And our song today, Mary Alice, this one's for you. She picked a song by a Mr. Bruce Springsteen. So as I play it, I request that, first of all, how wonderful is it that we can hear Bruce Springsteen music and he's not even in our houses with us. That's a miracle, that is a small miracle. But as we listen, just feel the love of your loved ones. They are happy, healthy, whole. They know they're gonna see you again and they are part of your life. So just imagine them with you right now. So let's hear a little Bruce Springsteen. We love you indeed. We do. Craig, welcome back. So grateful you're here. Andrew, thank you very much for offering to have me on the Sunday Gathering again. It's a pleasure to be here and it's absolutely a privilege. Um, I also want to thank Kerry and Phil while I'm here, just to say thank you um, to get brownie points. <laughs> but it's a pleasure to be here with everyone and during this day as well, which involves community and the community, not just of us together, but also of the spiritual world. And it's really something of a miracle to be able to connect, not just with all of us together, but to be able to hear that voice of the spiritual world as well. So you know the drill, if you can just use yes, no, and I don't know, please, because if I do hear evidence, then it's not evidence technically, right? But um, and I'll just uh, try and see what the story is here. So as I begin to move my soul to the spiritual world, I know I have a grandmother stepping forward. And I know there's a bit of distance here between me and her as well. So it feels as though um, she wasn't the most outspoken lady. And actually, I do feel she was a lady that was quite um, single minded, I want to say, because I feel I have to mind what I say around her as well. Um, and I know when I'm talking about being single minded, I feel as though she must have. I actually feel as though she would have. Um, she wouldn't have been shy of using her handbag. Um, just trying to see how to say this now. Um, I know when it comes to the public, I'm going to say that she must have actually um, hit someone with her handbag in public. And I'm going to pause there, Sandra, and just see what the story is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you can understand that information, Go ahead and press your raise hand button. 
Now, Craig, we have a lovely lady named Marceline who can understand this. Hi, Marceline. Hi, Craig. It's not a grandmother, it's an aunt, but the rest is exactly how she was. Marceline, I know you've said aunt there, but if I'm understanding this correctly, um, just one second, we'll, we'll see here what the story is. Um, you understand there's a great deal of distance between this lady and herself, though. It doesn't feel like the closest relationship. That's correct. And you understand where she had her own opinions, and I feel like she wasn't shy of airing them out loud either. Absolutely. And I know when I'm talking about quietness, it's almost not really... i got to be honest, she was very straight talking, you get me? <laughs> yes. Because I know she just said I was bitter. <laughs> Yes. And uh, I feel like I'm talking about her sitting in her, you've memories, Marceline, she makes me aware, you've memories of, of her being on the couch um, or on a chair. And I just want to say she could create her own atmosphere. Do you understand that? Yes. Because I feel like she was, uh, she was something else, but I feel like she also had, um, she did have a respect for you though, Marceline. Do you understand that? Not sure. One second there. Um, I know with the handbag anyway, it does feel like she could use that in any situation. She was a bit of a wild card. Yes. And when I'm speaking about wild card, I also know she would have played cards as well, would you? Sorry, I didn't understand. Would you understand her playing cards as well? Oh, yes, yes. Very good. And I also know when I'm talking about the wild part there, um, I do feel as though she had a little bit of a... Do you understand in the situation where she hit someone with her handbag that you had seen that as well? Yes. And I know when she was present, that was actually in public as well. Yes. And I actually see as well that it was a gentleman she hit as well. Um, I don't remember. I'm not going to say there's multiple. I think they'll get in trouble here. But um, <laughs> I do know she's quite um, boisterous with that handbag. It's uh, I do. That's the main point I'm trying to get at here. Um, yes. But I feel she was a character as well. Yes. Okay. She was a lady that stood up for herself and her own values. Yes. And she never took no for an answer. Correct. And I know when she felt like she was right, she'd stand up for what she believed in, and that was it. Do you understand? Yes. Because I know with this lady, she's stepping forward as well to present that forward with you to say that you have to stand up for your values and what you believe in. Do you understand that, Marceline? Oh, thank you. Do you understand that? Yes. And you also understand where I feel that she would be quite hot tempered with members of the family as well. Um, yes, she could be. And I do. You understand, Marceline, that before she passed, she wasn't able to speak? No. Then she must have been a lady that was able to make people... Um... One second here. I feel as though she was the type of lady that was able to... Um... She had a presence about her that was quite strong. Yes. And I know with that presence, that's where I want to go back to because I feel as though she was a lady that everyone respected regardless. Yes. And I know that's the point I'm trying to get to, because she was able to stand up for herself with that point in mind. Now, if I move back to, um, I can't get away from this bag incident. You must have seen this incident with the handbag as well, Marceline. Yes. And when you saw her with this handbag, um, the feeling is as though someone was trying to actually steal from her. Um, no. Do you, <laughs> do you understand where she could twist the, the truth sometimes to make a benefit? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think so. What, what I'm feeling here, I'll let you know this feeling is um, she was actually, I feel she would say she was defending herself in that situation. Do you understand? In a way. But it actually feels like it wasn't necessarily that, that she had just got very forward. Um, what's really interesting here is that I feel as though she's able to, she'd say what she wanted to say and that was it. Do you understand? 
Yes. And she wouldn't listen to anyone else's opinions. No, she wouldn't. Because I know she just said what she wanted to say, and that's enough, and I'm not getting any more, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I know she was private as well. Yes. And I feel that that was especially around other family members. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Excuse me, I get you. I know where she's speaking up to other family members, saying what she wants to, and then leaving. Um, could be. I know that because I feel that that's her character and that's the way she was. And if I'm correct about this, then you'll be able to confirm, Marceline, that this is something that you would need to do in your own life as well with your own family. Do you understand? Some yes. Sometime. There we go. That's that's the 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 proper part of it. Then, um, I know she had a very sarcastic sense of humor, though. Oh yes. Because I know I said it was a young gentleman that she hit with that handbag as well. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether she means someone in public that she met or me, so we'll figure yes. it out. But um, I, I do want to say one thing before I go. Please, please, <laughs> excuse me. She got a sense of humor. Um, I want to leave you with her sense of presence and strength and say thank you very much for your, um, what felt like grandmother but aunt coming forward. Okay, Marceline? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd love to tell you the story someday. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully I will someday. <laughs> Thank you, Marceline. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, everybody else, for listening. Okay. Um, okay. I have a lady in the spirit world, and I know she is a nurse as well. And it does feel as though it's sister. I want to, I actually want to speak to sister as well. All right, so we're looking for someone who sister was a nurse in life. Correct? I have sister in the spirit world. I know she's a nurse and I want to speak to sister as well. Okay. All right, ladies. <laughs> Nobody's, oh, I was gonna say no one's hand is up, but Eileen. Eileen, if you could unmute yourself. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Craig. How are you? How are you doing? You well? I'm good. Now, I brought a contact through for you before. I don't believe it was sister, though, was it? No, it was not. Oh, okay, very good. So just as we're moving forward here anyway, um, just please remember those yeses and noes, et cetera, and all that stuff. Um, but I do feel this is sister here as well. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand as well that I know there's something um, peculiar about sister? It feels as though, um, I'll get to that now in one second, but do you understand she was a nurse as well? Yes. And if I'm correct about this as well, she was also, um, I'm not up to scratch now on nurses and, and, and occupations, but would you understand where she was a paramedic on a ambulance as well? I'm not... I, I don't know that. Okay. Um, then where I'm talking about paramedics, would you understand her taking its emergency care she would have done? Yes. Okay. And I know with emergency care as well, um, she had actually studied in college as well to be that nurse. Yes. And I know as well when she studied in college, um, there were various books that she had on the subject also. Yes. And I know that some of those books um, it feels as though some of those books are still here today. I wouldn't know that. Then with those books, you must also understand that you've seen them and read some of those. Yes. There we go. And I also know that this lady was someone, your sister was someone that was, she had a heart of gold as well. Do you understand that? Yes. Because I feel it wasn't just taking care of people in emergency care. She was actually taking care of you as well. Do you understand that? To a degree, yes. And if I'm correct about this as well, um, the bond that you and her had, uh, she's making me aware that she was, you'd understand that there were still some regrets from her coming forward. Do you understand that? Yes. And you understand where that relationship at times wasn't the easiest to connect with? Yes. And I know there's a little bit of a distance there as well but it does feel like there's a love from one sister to another, and that's what she's come forward to deliver to you. Do you understand that? Yes. 
And I know as well that it's actually something of a case of, she makes me aware, Eileen, that things weren't necessarily easy for you this coming week. Yes. And that things weren't necessarily in balance, I want to say. Yes. Because I know that your sister, you actually took care of your sister. Do you understand? Yes. I know that's it because she's coming forward to take care of you now with, with what's going on this week for you. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I want to say thank you very much and I'll leave your sister's love with you. Okay, Eileen? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Craig. The gentleman and the accountants give the worst and I do want to say he dressed well. Um, no, there's memories of him. There must be a particular tie as well that he would have worn. Um, and I'm going to say it was a green tie. <laughs> Does anyone understand that information? So Craig, I don't know if this was my internet or not, but I missed what you had just said. I hate oh, excuse that. me. You. It's not um, your fault. It's the magic of uh, technology. So it wasn't you, I think. No problem. Just, uh, I have a gentleman here in the spirit world. I know he would have had a suit and tie. I know there's a particular tie, but I'll come to that in a second. And he's an accountant. Gentleman in the spirit world, special suit and tie and an accountant. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can understand that information, raise your hand. Dory has her hand raised, Craig. Hi, Dory. Hello, Craig. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well and yourself. Now, this gentleman, I'm not exactly sure on the relationship here, but would you understand that I brought this gentleman through for you before? Yes. I have. Okay. Um, so I'll ask him to come forward with different information, if that's okay with you. Is that okay? Yeah, it could be two people, Craig. Okay, we'll figure it out then at the moment. Um, but this gentleman, as I'm aware of him here, he does feel as though he's... Um, this actually does feel like someone that was close with you, um, but I still feel there's a distance here, almost as if we didn't really talk too much. Um, so I'm going to say this is father as well. Do you understand that, Dory? Yes. And um, with father as well, excuse me. Dory, would you understand that your father had difficulties with... Um, Excuse me, but would you understand where there were digestive issues with your father and um, where he would have been, um, I think the words, excuse me, but like excreting or, or vomiting. Um, do you understand that? No. Um, would you understand that before he had passed, he was quite sick, though? Yes. And where there would have been issues to do with him swallowing or his neck? Yes. Okay, because I know I'm just feeling that there. Um, but I also know with your father as well, he was a very factual man and, and a matter of fact with, with things as well. Do you understand that? Yes. And so I know there wasn't really, um, he did have a positive side and a very joyful side. Um, and I know he had a, quite a quick sense of humor. Yes. And I do feel he was very funny, but he was also matched that funniness and that humor with his intelligence. Um, I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> um, then you must understand that he was someone that would have considered himself quite witty and intelligent. Do you understand? Um, I wouldn't know what he thought. One second here now. Um, oh, I see. One sec. Dory, you understand that your father was an accountant? Yes, he worked in a bank. You understand that information? Yes. 
Okay, excellent. Um, and you also understand this particular tie in suit. I don't know what you mean by particular. When I'm speaking about this tie, it actually feels like it's one he wore for special occasions. I think it, you have my husband now. Okay, well, hold off. Let's let's figure it out here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I know Fader is here on my right. I know Fader was the accountant. Yes. If I'm correct about this. I know there's a tie in particular. Your father didn't wear that, though. Is that correct? That's correct. And that is your husband's then? Yes. And that explains the distance then. Okay, one second. Let's sort this out. Um, your father and your husband got on very well, though. They did. And I knew they liked to play tricks on people. Um, well, I feel what I feel is that they were quite charismatic men and they could joke and laugh. And there's that wit there yes. between them. Yes. There we go, because I know they're doing that to me now. But I also <laughs> know with your husband, your husband was a man. I have brought him through for you before now. Yes. Um, but I do know I've never brought this tie through. And I actually feel... Did you understand there was a bit of Irish heritage with your husband? Um, I don't think there's Irish. Mm. Believe about me for a second. All oh, right, I see. But that's where he got his charm then. So he must have had that charm as well. That was a, um, he's a clever man. Do you understand that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so I know where he also would have consumed um. He didn't consume alcohol in excessive amounts. He liked a short uh, spirit, I want to say. Yes, he did. And it would have been whiskey as well, but that was on special occasions. Yes. And he also would have had it just on the rocks. Correct. And I know when he had it on the rocks, sometimes it would be cheers in you as well, Dory. Do you understand that? Uh, could you repeat that? Would you understand that your husband would cheers you um, I know when he poured out this drink, I feel as though he's pouring out this drink. He's given it to you as if to say cheers. And I know oh. this would have happened. Um, I feel like there's special occasions that this would occur. Do you understand that? Can't remember. Then, Dory, there must be something going on in your life right now that he wants to salute you for, say cheers for. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. There we go. And I know as well that... <laughs> I don't, he's bringing back something funny here. One second. Um, if I'm correct about this story, you've actually had some sort of financial success at the moment as well. Is that correct? Not that I'm aware of. Then would you understand that with your father, he would sometimes take care of accounts and things and be very intellectually aware of where money was spent? He was very aware where money was spent, yes. Both of them were. Yeah. And because I want to say that this is where I'm going towards yourself as well, that these two gentlemen are coming in to say cheers because you must have succeeded in something that you thought you would have failed at. Is that correct? Uh, perhaps. And where I'm talking about business and finances with that as well. Um, yes. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. And, I'm trying um, not to tell you anything. No problem. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, and I just know that your father as well is coming to get, I feel these two are wisecracks. Do you understand that? When they got yes. together? Yeah, because yes. I just feel that sense of humor there and that um, joy. And I know that upliftment as well. Um, so I do want to say thank you very much for these two gentlemen for coming forward. And uh, I just know your husband is raising that glass, but it's nearly empty now. So I just say thank you very much for coming forward, okay? Thank you. They're both very alike. Thank you. Thank you. They're lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dory. Thank you, Craig. Have we room for one more? We do, Sandra? Yes, we do. Okay. My glass is empty. Funny. Okay. I have a lady here in the spirit world, and I know she was a medium as well. And I also feel, <clears throat> I'm actually going to stop there. I'm going to chance this. Does someone understand the lady in the spirit world that was a medium? Perfect. Uh, yeah, several hands have gone up. Okay. 
Um, I know this lady was a medium and I know she would have done... Okay. I feel as though she would have done trans mediumship as well. And I know she also would have been a mental... I know she would have done mental mediumship also. And I feel as though she had her own church that was, she was involved in as well. Okay, we've got a number of hands up. So I'm putting everyone's hands down. If you can take the mental and trans mediumship, being part of a church, raise your hand again, if you would. We have lots of people with their hands raised, Craig. Interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so as I begin to work with her again, I do feel... I'm actually hearing the name of Lisa, so that must connect with this lady in some way as well. Okay, a few hands have gone down. All right, Elizabeth and Yvonne, I'm just saying your name just to make sure you have your hands up on purpose. And Sheila can take 100% of the information, I'm trusting. All right. Elise, Sheila and Yvonne can take 100% of the information. Okay, very good. Let's work between them now. So I know where this lady also had a certificate or a plaque. And um, it is actually a plaque that was put up to do with her as well. So I actually feel this is in her memory too. Okay, ladies, can you both take that? All right, we are down to Yvonne. So Yvonne, oh, Sheila, I see you just put your hand up as well. All right. Craig, would it be all right if I, I just bring them both? Yeah, sure. Let's first away. Okay. So both you ladies, you can unmute yourselves. Yvonne, there you go. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi, Yvonne. Hi. Hi. Do you understand all of the information? I'm not quite sure about the plaque. Okay, let's work through it. Let's work through it. One sec. So I know I said she was a mental medium. I also said she was a trans medium. Do you understand those two? Yes. Do you also understand that she had her own church she was involved in? Yes. Do you also understand there was a plaque put up of her? Um, I wouldn't know about that. Okay, pause there one second then. Thank you for coming forward. There's Sheila as well, is there? Yeah, hi. Sheila, how are you? Do you understand the information I just repeated? Yes, um, but Lisa and her husband had a church. They worked together. So. Okay, one, one second now. Um, it's not evidence if you give it. <laughs> but uh, excuse me, just for a minute. Let's just go through this together. Do you understand mental mediumship with this lady? It was more of a new age church with that. That, that's okay, um, Sheila. Do, do you understand the mental mediumship and the trans mediumship, though, just to progress forward? Not the trans so much. Not the trans so much. I hadn't experienced that part with her. Okay. Um, and would you understand there was a plaque put up of this lady as well? As I, I said, it was with her and her husband. And that was a plaque, though? It was their church. So they had plaques. They had plaques. Okay. And that makes more sense than there. Um, Craig, we have one more person that can take all just the information. Say that. Is that, <laughs> can we bring someone else forward then and see what the story we is? We can. We have a lovely lady named Carrie. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Craig. Hi, Carrie. Do you understand this lady in the spirit world and you understand the name of Lisa connected with her as well? Yes. And you understand there was a plaque of her as well just after she had passed? Yes. And you understand she was a mental medium as well? Correct. And she also did do trans mediumship as well? Correct. And this lady was actually a mentor to you in a sense as well? No. No. Um, but she was connected with your mentor? No. Okay. One mm -hmm. second. That does feel a lot better, but um, I haven't brought this lady through for you before, have I? Correct. You have not. Okay. Perfect. If I can move forward then here. Um, I feel this lady was someone that was very... Um, you understand that you know this lady because she was... You had met her at an event, actually. That's what I want to say. Is that correct? Yes. And when you when she had met you at this event, I feel she was a little bit um 
I want to say she was perceived as a little bit distant with you. Do you understand that? Yes. And I know she would kind of, <laughs> I feel she was actually trying to suss you out, Kerry. I wouldn't know. Um, then you'd understand that her perception of that, you would have perceived that yourself. Yes. Okay, that's right. Um, so I'll work forward here. But I know this mental mediumship in her as well. I feel she was very, um, I want to say she had a conviction when she did her mediumship. Do you understand that? Yes. And I know she had a conviction because she knew she was right. Yes. And I want to say she was right because she was informed. She knew exactly how to do the mediumship and she was very advanced, actually. Correct. And if I'm correct about this, she... Um, Kerry, do you understand that this lady had actually met Gordon Higginson? Yes. And would you understand as well that she told, she had a few choice words for Gordon Higginson? I don't know. <laughs> um, if I'm right about this, it feels as though she was quite standoffish though with people she could be um, involved could in the be. mediumship. Yes. And I feel she had her own opinions and when she felt she was right, she didn't walk away from it. Correct. And I do feel as though if she ever did meet him, that could have been an occurrence, but no way of proving that. Um, but I do feel she was very charismatic, though, as well, when she was up presenting. Yes. So I know it's not just mental mediumship and trance, but she was also given beautiful addresses. Yes. And I feel that some of the addresses that she gave, actually, she makes me aware they touched your heart and soul as well, Kerry. Correct. Because she was someone that inspired you to be that medium as well. Do you understand that? Yes. And if I'm correct about this as well, she was to consider other people's opinions. Um, in the sense, you understand she had on unsha- there was a problem with the internet, Craig, so all of that I missed. I'm sorry. Could you repeat it? Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> what I said previously was this lady. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, this lady, I feel, was very confident. Yes. I feel as though her confidence was what influenced you. And I also know that one of her addresses has influenced you when she came forward as well. Her confidence did inspire me and her addresses. Yes, I remember her addresses. And I understand if I understand this correctly, when she came forward in this, she must have been at a demonstration and had a as conversation with you Kerry do you understand that yes and at this conversation it feels as though she was teaching you things about mediumship yes and she was also talking about clairvoyance as well no she was actually she was sharing philosophies about spiritualism correct there we go um and I know that she's I know she's not someone that would say too much either or pat people on the back as well. Do you understand that? Yes. But I do know she's coming forward because of the address that you've given as well. And that's acknowledgement towards what you've become, because I know you're quite similar in character today. Do you understand that? I know in some ways we're quite similar, yes. Okay. But please know this lovely lady has come forward and I'll say thank you very much for working with me, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, very much for being. It's just amazing to be up there. Thank you. Oh, Craig, thank you so much. I'm sorry about the internet. It, well, it's not your fault. We know we're lucky we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig can't see us, but he can see if you want to press your raise hand button. It's all just give him a round of applause. It's not easy to be up in front of a couple hundred people and trust what comes through. But Craig is a product of Carrie and Phil's uh, tutorage, if that's a word. <laughs> um, he's been in our community for quite a long time. And Craig, thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for working through whatever nerves and just saying yes to the spirit world. It is a 
beautiful thing to be able to offer people that no longer can walk this earth an opportunity to share some words and whether they're words of i'm right here with you sometimes there's apologies sometimes there's words of advice they are with us and i encourage everyone even if you're not interested in becoming a medium come aboard and take some of our classes get to know how your soul works and communicates they're fun they're loving you can see how much joy one feels working with the spirit world you know we don't go over there and um and just become blah we retain our personalities our sense of humors all of those good things carrie and phil's mediumship classes start next week and we we welcome you to join us please come along uh details for everything i'm about to mention are we don't die.com just click on the store page so some good things coming up first of all next week immediately after well maybe 20 minutes after the sunday gathering ends we are doing a full demonstration of mediumship. We are going to have Carrie and Phil with us for 90 odd minutes or so and just be delivering messages from the spirit world. We know in our Sunday gathering, there's just a handful of people that come aboard from everybody in the spirit world saying we're right here, but it's an opportunity for a much smaller group and more people get an opportunity to share their voice from the spirit world. We are also raising money for We Don't Die films. You may have seen the movie about Sonia Rinaldi made by Robert Lyon, our film producer. We've got other films coming up and uh, we do know a, fa a favorite medium couple. Let us just say there may just be a film about them. So if you want to come uh, donate some and uh, join us next Sunday after the Sunday gathering for the medium demonstration with Carrie and Phil, we would love it if you were there. Also, like I said, next week, our new classes start. This Tuesday, we have our friends Kath and Mitch Shirley that are going to do a free 90 minute grief cafe. It's an opportunity, opportunity to learn about grief, to share. It is not recorded. It's usually a very small group. Whoever wishes to be there and feels right being there, please come. Your voice is heard. You can express, share yourself if you like. No pressure to do so, but you can learn some things about the world of grief, and it really does make a difference. So that is on Tuesday, 8.30 London time. What else do I have to say? New classes, and not too many. Not too many big announcements. Um, we welcome your suggestions for our Sunday gathering. Another shout out to our friends that contributed today. You didn't know you did, but you certainly did. Again, home base is we don't die.com. You can click on the Facebook group page and you can join us. You can click on radio shows. I have now have over 500 episodes of very heartwarming interviews about the afterlife. It is very, very real. Um, while you're at that store page, if you want to scroll down and find my book, We Don't Die, and use coupon code FREE, chapter 10 is how to survive grief. And I do know that grief is torturous. And I know it can happen when our loved ones migrate to the other side. It can happen, like I said at the beginning, some people are no longer in relations with people in their family or experiencing grief. Some people have aging parents, some people have loved ones that may not be the healthiest and we're worried about them. Grief can kick in so many different times. So please be my guest and use the distinctions in that. Uh, and last, I just wanna say thank you so much for the donations you've shared. I know there's some folks that give a dollar, sometimes a little bit more, whatever it is, we appreciate it because it helps us keep our Sunday gathering going. As you know, we are just volunteers here sharing the good word and everything you get out of our Sunday gatherings, we do too. So we will keep it going. What I'd like to do now is send it back over to Craig with some words for the week and then our closing prayer. Thank you, Sandra. It's an absolute pleasure to be here again. And um, when I talk about what community meant to me, and how I was figuring it out in my head, the one thing that I thought of was opportunity. And really, when we get to come together, it's such a beautiful opportunity to really understand and to empathize and to be able to feel 
just relaxed and natural, you know, human in essence. And I had the absolute pleasure this week of all of the supportive mediums in the groups that were supporting me this week, especially. Um, and you just know who you are. But in one particular situation, there was one lovely lady who was struggling really hard with her purpose with the mediumship, understanding her why, the reasons why she was doing it. On another occasion, there was a lovely lady we were talking for six hours about mediumship and spirituality. That's two Lord of the Rings films back to back, ladies and gentlemen. That is a lot, right? Time flies when you're having fun. But you don't have to be a medium to understand spirituality. And you certainly don't have to be a medium to experience love, empathy, and understanding. And these are things that even normal, regular people or people that aren't necessarily mediums, let's say, can understand as well. Back in December, um, there was a gentleman called Joe. He was a tailor and sold suits. And this gentleman wasn't in the best of minds. He wasn't doing well with his business. He was really upset. And I was actually sad to leave the shop. He shook my hand. He said, Merry Christmas, Craig. And I nearly saw a tear. He was I. Now, I'm very happy today to say that Joe has so much business he can't deal with. Okay. And then there's even Tom down the road, the local butcher. And Tom, for some reason, I understand that Tom doesn't eat his breakfast in the morning and he gets cravings for chocolate in the evening. Who would have known? And we can all relate to that, I'm sure. And then maybe there's Tatiana, the local baker down the road. And Tatiana, funny or not, on Monday, seemed to have plenty of business. And then when I arrived in Thursday, she said, Craig, I don't know what's going on. There's nobody here. And of course, all of this was quite funny, but you had to buy her cookies. She has the most delicious cookies on the planet. And I didn't buy them all, but that's the point there. What am I really getting at here? I'm trying to say that a community, when you go out there and you connect with people and you have to be vulnerable and you just say, hi, hello, how are you? It can make a real difference in people's lives. It can make a difference in yours just as it has in mine. And if you can't do it in physical, you can do it online. Send me a message, send Sandra a message, send maybe Kerry and Phil if they're not too busy. And connect with people and have that empathy, that understanding and that love. As Phil said as well with the mountains, we are in essence kind of many peaks coming together to form that mountain, that larger mountain of love. And so go out there, be vulnerable, enjoy life, and have some fun doing it too. Thank you. Would you like to lead us into our closing prayer, Craig? Oh, of course, yeah. To whomever you acknowledge as God, let us pray together now. Dear Spirit, dear Father God, dear Universal Force, we thank you for coming to us with your spirit of community, of love, of compassion. You give us hope through the rainbow, you give us strength through the mountain, and you give us the perseverance to carry on, to move forward in life knowing that we can connect with those loved ones, both in spirit and in human form. And we thank each and every one of us for stepping forward and being a part of community, together as one. Many peaks, one mountain of love. Amen. Thank you so much, Craig. And thank you to Carrie and Phil. Thank you to everyone who's watching, whether you're watching us live or you're watching the replay, you are part of our community. And of course, thank you to our friends and our loved ones in the spirit world. We will see them again. They are healthy, well, and alive. And when you look at their picture or you have a happy memory, they're right there with you. So our closing song, we want to thank Linda. It's a beautiful morning is the name of the song, but it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's a beautiful evening. It's a miraculous world. So sit back and relax to our closing song.
Yes, see you next Sunday. Thank you everyone for being here and you special ones that stayed at the very end. We love you. We'll see you next week. And don't forget, we've got that medium demonstration after. So we don't die.com, click on store and just join us for everything. Carrie, Phil, Craig, love you. Mwah. Thanks everyone. Bye.